when you are in the Tanakh and you're looking at the Debir, the the sanctuary, you see that in uh, Malachim Aleph, First Kings, uh, chapter six, that this sanctuary is laid out. Uh, let me just start reading here, verse two. And the base which King Shlomo built for Hashem, the length thereof was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits. And the ulam, the portico, in front of the heho of the base, twenty cubits was the length thereof, according to the breadth of the base. And 10 cubits was the breadth thereof projecting in front of the base. And for the base, he made uh, embrasures. And against the wall of the base, he built chambers round about. Against the walls of the base, round about both of the Hegel and of the Debir. And he made chambers round about. The lowest story was five cubits broad, and the, and the middle was six cubits broad and the third was seven cubits broad for without in the wall of the base he made narrow ledges round about that the beams should not be fastened in the walls of the base and the base when it was under construction was built of stone made ready before it was brought there so was neither hammer nor ch chisel nor any tool of iron heard in the base whether while it was under construction and uh, here you have the uh, the picture in the sixth chapter of first kings of the the, the uh, sanctuary Hallelujah. It says 20 cubits was the length and uh, we get this uh, picture of the house of God but in chapter 21 of Revelation you get a picture of the city of God. Uh, and this is one, uh, one that we need to think about here because this is the ultimate destination. After the uh, Agam Ha'esh, the burning and the gofrit, the sulfur, and the end of the beast and the Neve Sheker uh, and the second death, the uh, Hamavet Hashani, you get a picture of the city of God. Uh, it says, having a great and high wall, having 12 gates. And at the Sherim, the gates, 12 Malachim, 12 angels, and Shemot names were inscribed on them, which are the Shemot of the Shemot Masar Shifte HaBene Yisrael, the 12 tribes of the Bene Yisrael. There were Shalosha Sharim, three gates on the Mizrach, the east. There were Shalosha Sharim on the Zaphon, the north. Shalosha Sharim on the Darom, the south. And Shalosha Sharim on the Maharav, on the west. 
and on the wall of the Ir HaKodesh, had 12 foundation stones, and on them were the Shanaim Osar Shemot, the names of the Shanaim Osar Shalehim of the Say, of the Lamb. And the one speaking with me had a gold measuring rod that he might measure the ear HaKodesh, the holy city, and its gates, and its wall. Now look at this verse. Chapter 21, verse 16. And the city is laid out four square, shaped like a cube. And its length is as great as the width. And he measured the ear HaKodesh with the rod across. And it measured the name Asar 12,000 Stadia, that would be 12, 1,500 miles. And the length and the breadth and the height are equal. And he measured its wall, 144 cubits, or 72 yards, by man's measurement, which is also that of the Malachim. And the wall was constructed of jasper, and the ear was pure as a hav like clear glass. The foundation stones of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of precious stone. Harishon, the first foundation stone was jasper. Hashani, the second, sapphire. Hashilishi, the third, Halcedoni. Harivii, fourth, emerald. The fifth, sardonyx. The sixth, carnelian, the seventh, crystallite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, uh, chrysophras, the eleventh, jacinth, the twelfth, amethyst, amethyst, and the twelve, shaarim, the twelve gates were 12 pearls, respectively. Each one of the shorim was a single pearl. And the Rahul, the street of the city, was pure as a hob, like transparent glass. So there is a main street, and it is pure gold. And there are 12 gates, and they are pearls. And I saw no Hegel in it, no temple. For Adonai Hashem El Shaddai and the Say are its base Hamikdash. And the city has no need of the Shemesh of the sun, nor of the Levana, the, the moon, that they may shine in it. For the Kavod, the glory of Hashem, illuminated it, illumined it, and its menorah. It's it's uh, handle menorah is the say the lamb, and the nations shall walk there, Derek, by its or by its light, and the Malachim, the kings of Haaris, shall bring their glory into it, and Bayom by day, for there shall be no Lila. The Sherim, the gates of it, shall never be shut. And the Malachim shall bring the kavod, the glory of the nations, into it. And there's, and never may enter into it anything tame, unclean. And anyone practicing toeva, abomination, and sheker, falsehood. But only the ones having been written in the Sefer HaChayim shall hase, the book of, of life of the Lamb. So when you get to the end of chapter 20, you say you see the lake of fire, the Agam Ha'esh. And you see the Mavet Hasheni, the second death. And the Agam Ha'esh, the lake of fire. 
And if anyone was not found having been written in the Sefer HaChaim, he was cast into the Agam HaEsh. So when you see the terrible evil of this world, I think especially of Nazi Germany and the 30s and the 40s, then when you see that Fuhrer's body burning outside the Fuhrer bunker in Berlin, you get a picture of the Agam Haesh, the lake of fire. And when you think of Rav Shaul, he mentions Caesar several times. Uh, he's referring to Nero, the beast, whose name is in Gematria 666. When you add up the letters, that's what you get for Caesar Nero. So he's a picture of the final beast. And this is the one that Rob Scholl had to appeal to. And this is the one that from the Mamertine dungeon he's writing about when he gets to Second Timothy. Here he is cold. He doesn't have a winter coat. He doesn't have his books. He's getting ready to face this beast. He knows the Lord has shown him that his time is running out. How could God bring anything good out of such a devastating picture? And yet without that, we would not have this the second letter to Timothy, which is what the rabbi from Tarsus film is based on. Go to you version. I'm sorry, go to uh, YouTube. Go to Google and type the rabbi from Tarsus, the complete movie, and you can watch it. It's about an hour and a half long. But this Aish, this Agam Ha'esh, this lake of fire, is the backdrop of what's going on here. But then there is the Ir HaKodesh, the holy city, coming down from heaven. And it says, he showed me a Nahar, a river of Mayim Chaim, the water of life, bright as crystal, coming forth out of the Kisei, the throne of Hashem and of the Say of the Lamb in the middle of the Rehob, of the street of it, and on either side of the Naha, the river, was the Es Hayim, producing Shanaim Asar Perot, 12 fruits, according to each Hodesh, each month, yielding the pre of it, the fruit of it, and the leaves of the, of the tree, of the Etz, were for the Rafua, the healing of the nations, and there shall no longer be any kelela, ke any curse. And the kisei, the throne of Hashem and of the say, shall be in it. And his avadim shall serve him. And they shall see his face. And Hashem of him shall be on the, the uh, mitzachim, the foreheads of them. His name will be on their foreheads. And there shall no longer be Lila. And they have no need of the ore of a menorah and the ore of the Shemesh. Because Hashem Adonai will give forth ore on them. And they shall reign. And he said to me, these Devarim are Ne'emanim and Amitiim. And Hashem the Elohe Ruach HaNevuim, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his Malach, his angel, to show to his Avadim things that are imminent. And he say, I'm coming quickly. 
Ashrei is the one who is Shomer, keeping the Devarim HaNevuah, the words of the prophecy of this Sefer. And I, Yohanan, am the one hearing and seeing these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell to worship before the feet of the Malach, showing me these things. And he says to me, see that you do not do it. A fellow evid of yours I am, and of your Ahim, the Nevi'im, the prophets, and of the ones who are Shomer, keeping the Devarim of the Sefer. Worship Hashem. And he says to me, do not seal up the Devarim HaNevuah, the words of the prophecy of the Sefer. For the Zaman, the time is at hand. Let the one being unrighteous, let him be unrighteous, no. And let the one who is filthy be filthy, no. And let the Tzadik be a Tzadik, no. And let the Kadosh be Kadesh, no. The holy person be sanctified still. Hine, I'm coming quickly, and my Sahar, my reward is with me, to give to each one according to what he has done. I am the Aleph and the Tav, Harishon, the first, and Aharon, 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 the last. Harashit, the beginning, and Hataklit, the ultimate. Ashrei are the ones washing their kaftans, that they may have the right to the Etz HaHayim, the tree of life, and they may enter by the Sherim, the gates into the city. Outside are the Kalavim, the dogs, and the Mehav Shafim, Mehash Shafim, the sorcerers, the abusers of drugs, and the Zonim, the sexually immoral, and the Rotschim, the murderers, and the Ovde Ha'elilim, the idolaters, and everyone loving and practicing Sheker. I, Yahushua, Yeshua, sent my Malach to give solemn aidus to you of these things for the Kehilot. I am the Shoresh, the root, and the Tzemach of David, the Kohav HaShachar. This word, Tzemach, chapter 22, verse 16. Saharia comes up to Yeshua, the Kohen Gadol, Yehoshua ben Yehotzadak, who has both names in the Tanakh, both the Aramaic and the Hebrew. And he says, Hine ish Tzemach Shamo. The Tzemach of Dovid is his name. In other words, the name Yeshua or Yehoshua is the saving name. And this man bears that name. He is the post-exilic Kohen Gadol. He comes to Jerusalem to build the temple that has been destroyed by the Babylonians. And he's going to rebuild it. And Zaharia tells him that the name that he bears, Yeshua, is the Tzemach of Dovid, which you find here, here again in Revelation 22, 16. And the Ruach HaKodesh and the Kala say, Bo, come. And the one hearing, let him say, Bo, come. And the one thirsting, let him come. The one desiring, let him take the Mayim Hayim freely. I give solemn adieu to everyone hearing the Divrei HaNevuah of the Sefer, of this Sefer. If anyone adds to them, Hashem will add to him the Makot, the plagues, which are written in this Sefer. If anyone takes away from the Devarim of the Sefer of this Nevuah, this prophecy, Hashem will take away his share of the Es Hayim and from the Ir HaKodesh, which are written of in this Sefer. He who gives solemn aidus to these things says, Ken, I'm coming, Bolt, uh, 
I'm coming soon. Balt. Omain. Kam Adonainu. Yeshua, Yeshua. The Hin Vahesa Hashem of Adonainu, Yeshua, Yeshua, be with you all. Omain. Lord, we thank you for the revelation, the Hiskalis. We thank you, Lord, that there are seven kehilot that, get, that are given letters of commendation and rebuke, that there is a staper, a book that no one can open, a book of destiny. Finally, the Lamb begins to open the the seven seals and these judgments begin to roll out and we see the judgment of the four horsemen of the apocalypse apocalypse we see the COVID-19 scourges these military labs coming up with lethal viruses and germs to use as weapons and we see these things unleashed, but this is all written about 2,000 years beforehand for our warning. And we see the wonderful Ir HaKodesh, the holy city, but we also see the lake of fire. And Lord, I want to pray for everyone listening to this little message that they will turn away from their sins and come to you. Seek the Lord while he can be found. And Lord, I want to pray that this translation that was done for the Lubavitchers, the Orthodox Jewish Bible, that we'll be able to put this all over Crown Heights and that people will get it from uh, everywhere on our website, afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B dot PDF. And that people will get it in Yiddish if they're ultra-Orthodox Yiddish speakers, they'll go to yiddishbible.net and they'll watch the Yeshua film in Yiddish. And they will see all the materials that are there in Yiddish. Materials that took a lifetime of ministry to put together Lord, I pray right now that your hand will be heavy on this ministry tomorrow, heavy on the preachers, heavy on the hearers, heavy on the Muslims who come and the others, and that we will make the Lord's Day a day of praise for your glory and honor tomorrow. Moshiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life. And I will praise you and follow you all the days of my life. And every